Hello and welcome everybody back again to Kerbal Space Program. As you can see, today we're gonna launch another of my shuttles. This one is a little bit bigger than the last one, reason being that I'm trying to carry a big Kerberdyne tank up into orbit. And here it is inside the stock cargo bay. And as you can see, it's filled to the brim with fuel and oxidizer and both are locked from being used by the uh, vehicle for any stages of the flight. Let's try to ride this out, shall we? KSB of course loading slow as always. And here we are on the launch pad already aligned to a 90 degree vector and the engines start with their mighty roar and up it goes somewhat as you can see I'm trying to balance the craft by adjusting the thrust limiter of um, the two Kerberon engines on the orbiter during the first stage of the ascent I have to juggle around with the straight thruster so I can adjust the pitch up or down and later on I will switch to the angle thruster to prevent the vehicle from pitching up too steeply. Compared to earlier designs, I've given up on solid rocket boosters because honestly there are no solid rocket boosters big enough to power this thing. One of the reasons being the cargo, the payload, uh, alone weighs 82 tons. Of course this craft can also be used to carry other things into orbit like big parts for a space station. And here I got bored and switched to four times regular speed in the editing. Up we rise into the atmosphere, carefully judging how to limit the thrust on the engine to keep it straight until we reach the point of where we have to do the gravity turn. I spent quite a lot of time designing this thing, especially uh, the fuselage and the wings of the orbiter. And here we have the crew. Everything's fine. The craft can take up to six kerbals. At the moment we only have the two pilots. But there's another crew module on the bottom of the ship, so we can pick up other crew members in orbit or carry them up to a space station or somewhere else. And here we start our gravity turn. Slowly pitching down and reducing the thrust on the angled Kerberon engine. Eliminating it even, because otherwise we would keep pitching up and losing control of the aircraft. Speaking of control, I've also got some Werner engines uh, on the top and bottom of the external fuel tank. And here we are, ready for booster separation. I cut the engines to make sure, make sure that uh, I won't collide with the boosters. But seems like everything's fine and we can go continue our ascent up into the atmosphere. Already at th almost 30 kilometers and here I'm doing a complete failure by uh, adjusting throttle wrong and therefore pitching down instead of up. But no worries, our very competent pilot Sentry Kerman manages to keep the craft back onto its, tra uh, get the craft back onto its trajectory. And checking our fuel, this is the final fuel tank that will, uh, final part of the fuel tank that will empty before I have to dump it to save weight. 
and of course therefore increasing my delta V. Keeping a very flat trajectory uh, in order to minimize the circularization burn. So I use uh, the fuel mostly uh, to get the periapsis almost out of the planet, if you know what I mean. And we continue our ascent to about, uh, if I calculated this correctly, we'll uh, dump the tank at around 60 kilometers. And here I have to pitch up again because I uh, put the nose down too much and we lost altitude. But once again our brave pilot manages to keep the craft in check. And ascent again. Oh well, my mistake, not 60 kilometers, 40 kilometers. And we have booster separation. If you have watched carefully, I have put some parachutes on the booster so that it hopefully uh, glides safely to the surface and can be recovered. Um, if you're interested in stage recovery, there's a mod uh, called exactly that, uh, stage recovery. And if you design your boosters or dropped stages correctly, it can calculate uh, if it is possible to recover them and gives you back your funds. And we already have reached an apoapsis of more than 70 kilometers. Just doing some short adjustment burns to keep it that way since we're still in the atmosphere and therefore the air will break our ascent if we don't push against it and therefore lowering our apoaps. But now we're in space and the adjustment burn for uh, the circularization burn is not even 200 uh, meters per second of delta V and we have enough reserves to do that. Here we're burning for circularization, some minor adjustments and we are in orbit. Let's cruise to the sunny side of Kerbin so we can behold the magnificence of this aircraft. There we go, getting ready for opening the cargo bay. Three, two, one. And here we go, purely stuck, and since there is no um, pre-manufactured cargo bay to use for the big parts, you know, the, the size 3 parts, I had to do it completely manual. And here we deliver our 82 tons of a tank, making the craft significantly lighter and therefore, as you may see on the upper end of the screen, increasing our delta V to over 1000. If we would like, we could even take a trip to the moon and back. But that's not today's mission. Today's mission is to dump a tank into orbit without docking ports for other craft to use, so it's completely useless out there. And here it drifts into oblivion. There are two docking ports inside the cargo bay, so I can use it for multiple payloads at once. And for longer missions we have solar panels, and for docking we have this docking port on the top side right behind the cockpit. Remember where you've seen this? Yes, exactly, in the NASA space shuttle. Well, except for the solar, pan solar panels, of course. One more good look into the cargo bay. And we're almost ready to glide back home. Which could be a challenge because I am really bad at getting aircraft back onto the runway. So and here we go, I've made a maneuver, uh, maneuver node for our descent and set the periaps at about well 30 kilometer-ish 
on that peninsula east of the Kerbal Space Center. At least, I hope that's a good uh, periaps to get down to the surface without crashing and without missing the Space Center by too many kilometers. Reaching the atmosphere and still having to coast through a lot of air to reach it. Yeah, why would I do this? Why would I set my control surfaces only to do what they're supposed to do. Hmm, maybe because I have crashed the craft in the past, because some of the wings would do yawing instead of just rolling, or rolling instead of just yawing. Now that would be stupid, wouldn't it? Here we go. Adjusting a little bit and of course overshooting, but we still have loads of fuel to get back or to ad at least adjust our descent profile. Here we go, the end point is still in the ocean. Trying to stretch that a little bit because I know once we go below 30 kilometers the air resistance will break us significantly. Keeping close to that limit of 30 kilometers and now we're below it and you, you can see yes the effects of breaking which are of course simply of graphic of a graphical nature because there is no real re-entry heat in stock Kerbal Space Program which, as you may have heard, will change in the update 1.0, as the developers have noted. And I can almost see the space center and I'm going to overshoot at least as far as I can tell. Maybe we can get the descent profile down by burning down to the surface, which is actually quite stupid because it increases the danger of crashing and losing control as you can see because our aircraft is actually that at the moment yes out of control but brave Samtry Kerman and his co-pilot Thumbwig Kerman they do their best to get it back on course which is harder than it looks believe me this was not an easy maneuver to get out of and there we go we're miles off of target and we're closing in on the ocean and as all of you experienced Kerbal players will know landing in the ocean is not an easy feat as it is in real life I fondly remember a flight back from Turkey uh, back home where uh, we asked one of the stewardesses, jokingly by pointing on the security manual, well, how likely is it that when a plane lands on water that we have the time to put on our life vests and get out in an orderly fashion? You know what she said? She said, the probabilities of surviving a ditching are less than 1%. Quite encouraging statement from a professional flight attendant, a few minutes before takeoff. But as you may know, and as you can guess by listening to me, I have survived the trip and have never been in a ditching of, a sp of an aircraft, thank God. And here we go. This is one of the reasons why the Kerbal Space Center is in desperate need of a second runway which not only goes from east to west, but rather from north to south. Are we going to take the launch pad with us? It's not big enough to land on there, but there is grass for miles where we can put our shuttle down. And here we go, closing in, closing in, and touchdown! There we go, we have landed our shuttle, 
well at least in walking distance of the space center brakes on and there we go and let's have, let the crew take a little walk stretch their legs and bask in the magnificence of this big fat shuttle that just delivered well probably one of the heaviest payloads a shuttle can deliver in Kerbal Space Program but let's just be happy that we managed to do that without any problems and on the first try because there haven't been any accidents like for instance breaking tanks or losing stability in mid-flight tumbling around through the air and then hitting the ground no sir this entire flight was done in a single take and no editing at all, at all. no Kerbal life was lost in the course of this endeavor and the stability of the aircraft is a testament to Kerbal engineering prowess as we all know safe Kerbals are happy Kerbals and we all want to keep our Kerbals happy don't we thanks for watching till the next time goodbye